Dear friends, in this tutorial, we are going to cover two date time method of pandas to see how it can be used to process dates and times. One of the common problem in data analysis is the lack of uniformity in the structure of input data. For example, 5th January 2017 can be represented in all these different formats. And many times when you're processing uh, data, it can come in any of these string formats and the challenge for you is to convert it to a common concept called 5th January 2017 uh, as a date time data type. I'm going to show you how you can use to date time function to perform this conversion. As usual, I have launched my Jupyter notebook and I have all these different string formats in this dates list. You can use pandas to date time method and pass this list as an input and it will successfully convert all this variety of formats into a date time which is 5th January. Not only this, it can handle times also. So right now you have only dates. Let's say you are referring to 2.30 p.m. on 5th January. You can represent the same thing as 14.30 and it should be able to handle it fine. You can see that here. Now in US, the date format is MMDDYYYY but in Europe, we have dates first. So in Europe, if you want to say 5th January, you will say it like this. And if you pass that to append of date time, to date time function, then it will think that you're talking about 1st May because it is going by MMDDYYYY format. So to handle Europe dates, you need to supply this argument called day first and set it to true. And then it will convert it to uh, 5th January. You can see that here. You can use your own custom format also. For example, let's say instead of slash, you have dollar as a delimiter. In that case, by default, to date time function won't work because it doesn't know how to parse this string but you can help it by supplying a format argument in format argument you will say the first thing is day and the way you do that is by typing percentage d then you have dollar then you have percentage m which is your month and then percentage y i'm missing dollar here and you can see that it works. You can help pretty much anything. You just need to help to date time function clarify the format and it should work okay. Now going back to my original method here, what happens if you supply a garbage string? This ABC is an invalid date string. By default, it is going to throw a value error exception and the reason behind this is that in two date time function documentation errors are set to be raised and what it means is that invalid string will cause an exception if you want to ignore the invalid string then you can just supply ignore as errors argument so here I'm going to say errors is equal to ignore and then it will ignore the errors and it will not perform the time uh, date time conversion for any of these strings. If you want to just ignore this particular invalid string and still perform the conversion for rest of it, then you will supply this argument and the invalid string will be converted to not a timestamp but it you can see that the rest of the strings are converted fine now what if your input date time is coming in unix epoch format 
Unix time or epoch time is number of seconds that have passed since January 1st, 1970. And if you Google for epoch converter, you get this website where it will show you the epoch equivalent of current date time. I am going to take this and store it in this T variable and then call pandas to date time function on this. Now if you again open the documentation, you will find that there is an argument called unit which is set to nanosecond by default and this is for Unix epoch time. Uh, you need to set this argument to be seconds because the T that I'm supplying is number of seconds since January 1st, 1970. You can see that it converts this particular Unix time number into human readable uh, date time format. You can also convert the same thing into date time index by supplying it as an array. And I'm going to now store that into a variable. And then to convert back to epoch, you can just say dt.value integer 64. Convert my date time index into integer 64. Okay, the correct name of the method is actually view, not the value. Now you can see that you got back your epoch time, which is same as this guy here. And you got extra zeros because by default it is giving you nanoseconds. That was all I had about two date time function. It is pretty useful, makes your job really, really easy when you're dealing with dates and times. Highly recommended that you use this. Uh, and that's all that's all I had for this tutorial. I have a link of this Jupyter notebook in the video description below. Thank you very much for watching.